And we're back! Howdy all, this is Ethan Monreal, playing Oracle of Ages, and last time we were here... Um, we completed Jabu Jabu's Belly after being there for what seemed like 50,000 episodes at least, and this time around we're gonna hopefully make it to the 8th dungeon, or at least start it. Um, I will let you know, by the way, this is post-commentary, so if it sounds like I know what I'm doing beforehand, it's because I do. Um... I recorded this episode like three or four times, and I decided to say fuck it and just post commentate it so I could get this out quickly so I can go to bed. I actually got off work two hours ago, and I am a bit sleepy, so forgive me for that. But in any case, we need to go to the right, because if you don't remember from one of the previous parts while I swam into this rock, uh, <laughs> I was actually eating a egg sandwich at that point in time. Um that basically there's a Zora here we need to talk to who blocked us off from before. The seas beyond here swallow up all who venture into them. The sea of storms. I can't allow a child like you to pass. Kid, who the fuck do you think I am? The Zora scale, so you're Bonray. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, so he recognized how great I was. It's about time. In any case... What we're going to do here is go into a pirate ship, but I'm going to have trouble finding it for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and blog a little bit, lol. Uh, I actually had my... Oh, hey, we found it quicker than I thought we would. So let's talk to these pirates real quick, and after that I'll blog. Anyway, if you go into the ruins to the east, you'll never return. Tales tell of, a giant, of giant ruins east of the Sea of No Return. What that means is that we're definitely going there, and hopefully we'll be able to return. Cap'n isn't thinking about a thing. Oh, how long have we been adrift? Sail in the seas is every man's dream. It was great to sail, blah blah blah. Sea of storms, we're trapped in it. I have the Zora scale, that's my plot coupon. We can advance, okay, that's cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I got an adventure to complete here. So, a summary of what happened is basically the Zora scale let them escape, and he's going to give me another key item so that we can advance to the 8th dungeon. We got the Toke Eyeball. It's a treasure of the deep. Okay, so see you later, pirates. I'm sure I'll see you in another Zelda game. Um, if you actually play Oracle of Seasons, you'll see them again, but we're not, so if, as far as we're concerned, they're dead or something. Anyway, let's go in here. Alright, like, as I was saying, anyway, um, I just got off of work, uh, slightly earlier, and I confirmed, if you were curious, yes, my co-workers are, uh, ickly. they might not be homosexuals, but they are, in the very least, men who are sexually attracted to men. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, and we talked about how small of a gay world it was, um, because they know one of, well, it's actually just one person. He knows one of my friends, and consequently he knows all of my friend group, so he knows, like, 50, like, 50 other queens, which is, which is pretty neat, actually. Also, right here I'm making a mistake. I actually shouldn't have taken the raft. I actually took it just because I like how Link looks when he's riding on it. He looks kind of cute. But we need to actually be able to dive underwater here, so I have to go all the way back, frowny face. At least this gives me more time to chatter. But uh, yeah, we talked basically about how, like, once you know one person, you know a bunch of other people who are connected. And that's that's pretty true, although I do think that uh, that tends to annoy some people here, or I guess people who expect to see, like, expect to, uh, like, not have their actions heard, or, like, I guess have echoes or some shit. Because, like, basically, um, have, have I ever talked about gay association fatigue, gaff, or something else backwards? Basically, it's this thing that happens when the queen's searching, basically, you know how, like, when you are on a, oh, hold on found this in the sea, blah blah blah. Okay, so this toke is going to actually give us the iron shield, which is going to be pretty legit. But anyway, 
you know how like after a week of being on Grinder or any sort of app such as that, you kind of know everyone that's on there and you've talked to all the people who are willing to talk to you or the people who you're willing to respond to you've responded to. And then besides like random people who make their accounts and then delete them a day later, uh, you kind of milked the population dry. That is gay association fatigue, because basically once you talk with one person there, you've already talked to all the people they've talked to. And so you kind of get burnt out and you start saying shit like, why are all gay people dramatic when you do really basic stuff and it spreads to other people. But anyway, what I'm doing here is showing you that that Toki eyeball actually in the present is what let us get into the third dungeon. And right now, the Toke eyeball is going to let us get into this mini dungeon. Show your courage, wisdom, and power. The road to the past shall reveal itself. Alright, so what we have to do here is three different challenges. That is why I've had to re-record this and why I'm on post-commentary. But anyway, uh, gay association fatigue is pretty neat. I, I like kind of seeing people get annoyed with seeing people that they don't like everywhere they go just because every queen in this city knows every other queen. Um, maybe with some people removed in the middle, but they're... If, if you're on the if you're on the apps or even if you just go to the clubs regularly also spoilers I'm gonna die here and it's real embarrassing I am such a fucking casual holy shit yeah I just got obliterated by that hard hat beetle <sighs> sad face but I can promise you I'll do better after this so let's go ahead and get back in here but yeah. And I think that's just part of having a, a small community and being a small part of a population. You just slowly start to know everyone. Just kind of like, uh... It's kind of like once you uh, start meeting your cousins, you start meeting... Well, I don't, I don't know how it is with y'all, but at least when I met my cousins, my friend network kind of exploded outwards because people just know people. And you can't really run into some someone without meeting someone your friend or a cousin or some sort of relative is dated in the past. And that's the same thing with uh, gay association fatigue. I just honestly, uh, the reason why I even called it that was just because I wanted to make an acronym and I did, so get into it. But anyway, so what I'm doing with the Cane of Samaria here is using it basically to show me where the invisible paths are. Because if I push the block over an empty space, it's just going to disappear. So I'm kind of using it to like trace out where the path is. There we go. Alright, I'm going to make a mistake here and accidentally fall in. Because I was stopping to explain it, but then I realized I wasn't recording. So I kind of goofed up. But anyway... I believe I will be successful on this attempt. There we go. Alright, so another thing I need is the rocks cape, because they're actually kind of mean with what they do here. You act Oh my god, I forgot about this. You actually have invisible things you have to jump over, so you can't just use the, uh, the thing to see where the path ends, because the path isn't continuous. But luckily I figured out that you can take a shortcut if you pay attention. Um... And so now I'm just kind of pathfinding with it. But anyway, now that you know how this puzzle works... <sighs> um, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, there have been a few guys when I'm working at the register who've been able to tell I was gay, and it actually kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable. Not because I'm not necessarily comfortable with my sexuality, but... Um... I think it's because at work I'm not on my own terms. Like, if it was in my personal life, I'd be like, GTFO douchebag, or like, shut the fuck up, nerd. But when it's like at work, I have to like, be nice and professional, and I guess that's kind of disarming to me, because I can't do things on my own terms. Um, so I just kind of felt really uncomfortable. Um, and that actually usually happens, um, 
when I interact with other men of color. Like, white, white guys always assume I am straight, like, 100% of the time. Um... Unless... Unless they've been around gay black men a lot before. Um... But men of color usually typic- Hey, we made it to the... To the... To the ruins, yay. We're, we're getting- I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. I'm wondering if I should be blogging this hard, or just explaining the game, but... YOLO, it's my fucking channel. Uh... So we just need to make our way through the paths here, and the enemies here actually do a lot of damage. You're gonna notice I actually almost die a few times, but I make it through luckily. And luckily, if you have the iron shield, you can pr you can block the projectiles that both of those enemies throw out. But it's also easier just to dodge it, so the iron shield is kind of not that useful. Like I try to use it here, and then I remember if you just attack them while they're attacking, it'll interrupt them. Or it'll reset their, like, attack timer. <sighs> and you, I think you can knock their arrows out of the air with your sword, too. But, into your way. Um. But, men of color tend to be able to tell I'm gay pretty quickly. Um. And I think, actually, I used to present a lot more feminine when I was younger. Um, and kind of that is what stopped me from doing it, because people would bully me and shit, and so I don't think I'm so much masculine as I don't pre present... Mm, I try to, I almost present nothing, because it kind of... it stops people from harassing me or whatever. Um, but when I... I think my, like, my junior year in high school, I started saying fuck that, and I kind of loosened up a bit, but at the same time, um, while I'm more open in public, my ma- it drives my mom crazy and she cannot stand it if I am feminine at all, so I just kind of don't. Anyway, we actually made it to the 8th dungeon, holy shit, I've been talking a lot. Um, so what we're going to do here is actually cut the goddamn video, so I'll catch y'all later, have a good one, sorry, bye.